Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley. That is my older rescue pit bull Bronx in the background. Don't mind him, he's going a bit senile, a bit crazy, just smelling the daisies clearly. Anyways, if you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On the channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about alfalfa seed. So I'm just gonna show you real quick what this looks like. Alfalfa seed is an awesome crop to use as a way to give a field or a section of your garden a break without losing topsoil through wind erosion or water erosion. It's an awesome alternative, but it's also really great for intercropping and using as a cover crop with taller type garden beds or food production beds. So something where you're growing a uh, cucumber, for example, that you have trellised, or if you have tomato plants, pepper plants, things of that nature. We're gonna get into the science as to why this crop is so valuable. But first, there is a Canadian supplier and this family is awesome. Um, it's the Williams family and they actually sell alfalfa seed for $2.50 a pound. You can either order this online through their website, which I will include down below, or you can grab it through PV Mart across Canada, they will have it there. If you are in the US and you're looking for alfalfa seed, you will not find this in a garden center. Typically, you're going to need to go to a feed store or a store that deals with livestock because this is actually typically used as a forage crop for cattle. If you are a farmer or you are on a large scale and you are in Canada, Jeb Williams will actually deliver seed to your farm for you. Like I said, I will have that contact information down below. I know I do have a few farmers on the channel or people that are dealing with larger masses of land. So be sure to give Jeb a call and you guys can set something up if this is something that you are interested in. I am getting zero kickback for this. This is purely me wanting to support Canadians and Canadian food productions. Okay, so now that we got all that out of the way, let's jump into exactly what an alfalfa cover crop looks like or how we would use it for a surface crop on an unused piece of land or an unused plot of garden. I'm gonna start off with the concept of using this product or these seeds for a rest or a break within our cropping system, whether that be on the garden side or on a large farm scale. It works for both the exact same way. So you're going to put this down at a density of about a quarter of a pound per 25 square feet. That's typically the best rate. Another way to look at it is per square foot, you want to maximize your benefits. You're going to want to put four or more plants per square foot to give you a bit of a perspective as to how many seeds you need to broadcast. Now, the best way to put this on is broadcasting. However, you can actually seed place it or place it in the ground. It tends to germinate very quickly and it likes to be on the surface. It doesn't like to be dug down deep whatsoever. If you're using this in a rotation where you're giving a plot of land or a portion of your garden a break, it does a few big things. The first one being is it provides protection for that topsoil layer. We always are hearing about how soil is going to run out and that topsoil layer is the fertile layer or the layer that we want to protect. And alfalfa crops will do this because they are almost like a small bush in some respects. They have the ability to mat down the soil, which will prevent wind erosion, but also water erosion. This is really important. This is going to maintain that topsoil layer and prevent from its loss. The other big thing that this does is it actually provides nitrogen into the soil. We're gonna get into this a little bit more when we're talking about it using it as an intercrop or a cover crop scenario, but it does fix nitrogen, meaning next year you decide to crop that land, what will end up happening is you will have more nitrogen in your soil and therefore you will have to use less fertilizer. It's important to note that this is a perennial crop and depending on where you are located, it can survive anywhere from three to five years over and over and over again, especially if you're allowing it to set seed. 
That means if you're choosing to use this for nitrogen and less for soil stabilization, or you want to make sure that there's a crop on there the next year, you will want to do something called terminating the crop. Now this can be done through herbicides or it can be done through tillage. We'll get into what you're gonna do in your garden if you're using this for a cover crop scenario, but the important part is, is that you do it based on how much nitrogen you want in the soil. So I looked through some studies and the accepted value is if you do decimate or terminate the crop before July, then you're going to end up with the most nitrogen or the most pounds of nitrogen in the soil, which is around 90. The longer you wait in the season, the less nitrogen that is left in the soil. Younger plants fix more nitrogen and older plants tend to use more. And that's just for any plant, how it works. So if you're using this for a break, it's going to provide nutrients. It's going to provide that soil coverage. So you're going to have very little loss from erosion, but it's also going to give you a break or a way to control or lessen disease. So when you work this into a rotation, what ends up happening is your disease is lessened based on the sole fact that you are not cropping with the same crop over and over again, which will amplify the parts per million of bacteria or fungi or whatever the case is that can cause issues. There is a plant specialist at the University of Manitoba. His name is Martin Entz, and he actually has written quite a few journals and done a lot of studies on alfalfa. And he said that out of, if you work alfalfa into a soil three out of 10 years, you can see the benefits and the benefits in regards to both the ability to lessen soil compaction due to this massive taproot that we have on the plant, but also based on the nitrogen that is in the soil. Sometimes, depending on your year, these plants can fix anywhere from 150 to 200 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year. That's a lot of nitrogen that that plant can fix. And it's particularly good at fixing this nitrogen in poor nutrient dense soil. So the less nitrogen you naturally have in the soil, the better this plant does at putting that nitrogen back in. So something like a sandy soil is really going to benefit from the use of alfalfa plants. Another thing he was able to note was on a 20 year study, you can notice the effects of alfalfa crops being placed on that land 17 years after the crop has been taken out of the rotation and never used again. So you're able to see everything from the soil aggregate formation all the way to the actual nitrogen, bacteria, microbe integration. You can see all those benefits up to 17 years after the crop has been used on that land. So just to give you how, giving you an idea of how permanent and how intense this crop is, all towards the good. Now you can get pests with these, however, it's very unlikely for this to happen to you, especially if it's within your first try of using alfalfa, but there are fungicides you can use to help prevent or lessen these issues but I don't think that you will run into this. For the most part, my intent with the seeds that I have is to use it as a cover crop, intercrop scenario, and combining that with something I like to call or what the industry likes to call green manure. So let's jump into intercropping and cover cropping and exactly how alfalfa applies. So for a cover crop, intercrop scenario, we're going to be planting the alfalfa at the same density as we would for a break crop scenario. So we're going to put our uh, density at about a quarter pound per 25 square feet. That comes out to around four to five plants per square foot. Now this is ideal for nitrogen fixing, but also for the soil aggregation um, and compaction fixing. Alfalfas have, alfalfa plants have these massive tap roots on them. The tap roots do two things. One, it's going to act very similar to that radish, the daikon, the icicle radishes we were talking about in the other video, where it's going to penetrate the soil and fracture it, which will alleviate compaction. But what it also will do is it will not compete directly with your surface crops. 
So a tomato plant or a cucumber plant, something that's nice and tall, that's able to rise above that alfalfa field or that alfalfa crop and catch the sun still, those roots don't penetrate nearly as deeply as an alfalfa root does. What that means is it will not be in direct competition for nutrients, nor will it be in direct competition for water. It's going to pull all the water and nutrients it needs from below the root zone of most vegetable crops you're planting. So that's what makes this vegetable crop or makes alfalfa plants so superior as a cover crop slash intercropping scenario. We also have the nitrogen fixing factor. This means if you are an organically producing this or if you are inorganically producing your garden or your vegetables you don't have to apply as much fertilizer i would start off with probably half of what you would normally apply if you are doing intercropping with alfalfa the less nitrogen you apply the more the bacterium will form nodulation and therefore the more nitrogen you will fix and the more money you will save. Now, if we're doing a green manure scenario, which is essentially just the chopping down of our cover crop and then leaving the foliage on the surface, so it's almost like we're just doing like a weed whipping type thing, we're going to have more nutrition or more nutrients in the soil in the following years. In the meantime, we're going to be sequestrating some carbon and some other atoms, but the main objective is that if we're using this as a cover crop slash intercropping, we're going to want to chop that plant down probably in July. Now, the distance in which you decide to chop this is completely up to you. If you choose to leave your alfalfa grow, it will eventually flower and actually make some really pretty flowers that pollinators absolutely adore. But if it gets to a point where it's kind of overcrowding your vegetables, then it may be time to cut it back because it can get relatively large. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be cutting my back probably in July because then I'm sequestrating around that 90 pounds of nitrogen. And then I'm going to do another test plot where I leave it and I chop it down later in the year. The main thing is that I don't want it to compete photosynthetically with my other plants. I know nutrient wise and water wise, there won't be much competition. My concern is the height. So if you're using this in an intercropping slash cropping scenario, if you choose to do this, you will need to cut it back or at least give it a bit of a haircut. The good news is this is no different than weeding. What this will do is because you have four to five plants per square foot, you're fixing nitrogen, you're fixing the soil, you're also going to have a plant that is very aggressive at growing because that is what alfalfa does. It's very aggressive. And therefore it's probably gonna choke out a vast majority of your weeds, meaning you're not going to have to weed as much. So, a little bit of a haircut mid-year versus having to weed every weekend. I mean, the trade-off there is pretty huge and I don't mind a haircut in July versus having to pull dandelions and possibly my hair out. The process of giving it a haircut is actually called termination. So if you're looking up the technical term on the values or you're wanting to look up articles or journals on the time in place to terminate an alfalfa crop in your area, then the term you're looking for is termination. I hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you've heard of alfalfa, if you have bunny rabbits, wild forge, I know that you're watching and you're like, yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. But if you have bunny rabbits, then alfalfa is going to be your bunny rabbit's best friend because that is one of their favorite, favorite foods. But if you haven't heard of it used as a, a cover crop, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if this is something that you would actually try. If it is, great, I'm excited for you. I've never tried it in my garden. I've seen it used in the field. I've seen it used by farmers. Um, and I see enormous benefits to that but I've never been able to get my hands on any seed or by the time I thought about getting my hands on any seed, it's been way too late in the year. So yeah, 
I want to thank the Williams family so very much for reaching out and sending me some of these seeds. Be sure to check out their website if you guys want to grab some of this stuff. And if you want a whole truckload, be sure to book that sooner rather than later. If you have any other cover crops that you think are beneficial or you would like to mention, please leave those in the comments down below. Let's help each other out. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.